is uh, what's speed? What's the speed of an object? Change in distance over change in time, exactly. What's velocity? Yeah, so how would you, what's another way to say that? Those of you, have all, you have all taken way more physics than I have, so you should be way better at explaining these vocab words than I am. So, so what's a, if you were explaining that to somebody who'd never taken physics before, what does a vector have that, what does velocity have that speed doesn't? A direction. So effectively, speed plus a direction is velocity in a really simplistic way. You need displacement, but you need a direction. So we have vectors like that. Yay. So what does what this vector represent right here? What, 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 what does this represent? It represents the displacement. Specifically, if you can't really see, that's an arrow right there. Specifically from Los Angeles to Buffalo, South Dakota. So we have these vectors. They represent displacement. Displacement over time, a direction. Speed plus direction. Excellent. OK. So how many of you have worked with vectors before, at least a little bit? Yay, so you're all experts at this. This is fantastic. Nice. How many of you have added and subtracted vectors before? In what types of situations have you added and subtracted vectors? Not like what class you were in, but can you give me the scenario where you need to add and subtract vectors? Yeah. Well, sometimes if you're dealing with forces, mm. um, and you need to like figure out like a net force. Uh, if you have like an object like that's not flat, you can figure out. Excellent examples. So uh, a plane traveling in this direction, wanting to go in this direction, but the wind is going in this direction. So what path is the plane actually going in? Or if I want to fly my airplane straight there, but the wind is going that way, what direction should I point the plane in? Those kinds of things. We can figure out net overall rates of change based on all the forces that are at play. Now, what's great about this is that there's two-dimensionality, three-dimensionality, all sorts of fun things we can do with this. But we need to make sure we get the basics right first. So what happens when you add vectors? If you, if you have two vectors, and you can draw them, what's the easiest way to find the resultant sum? So if I have one vector here and I want to add this vector to it, what's been, what, have, what have I done there? Yeah, the head of one tail, exactly. And then the new one is a combined displacement vector right here. Does it matter what order you add them in? No. As the parallelogram shows right over here, it doesn't matter which way you order them in. So addition with vectors is what? What's that word called? What's that? What's it called? Do you remember this? <laughs> yeah, like that. It's like when I write something I can't spell, but commutative. <laughs> yeah, it's commutative. Exactly. You know, it's one of those questions like, are you smarter than a fifth grader? It's like, the, 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 how do you do long division? What are all the pieces called? Those things that you forget because you don't use that often. It's commutative. Exactly. OK, so if you can add vectors, what else can you do to vectors? Subtract them. So there's a couple ways to go about thinking about the subtraction of vectors. One way is framing it entirely in terms of addition, if you wanted to, or like this. This is an interesting way to do it. I traditionally was not taught this way, but you might have been taught this way. The difference, vector w minus vector v, is the displacement vector that when added to v gives w. So when added to v gives w, this is w minus v. That's another way to think about it. That's not the way I've traditionally thought about it. I usually think about it as w plus the opposite of v. That's the way I generally think about it. What happens when you plug a negative sign in front of a vector? What does it do? It does. How does it change direction? Be precise. Flips it what? 180 degrees. Just turns it around. Exactly. So another way to think of vector subtraction and the way you would draw this if you wanted to do w minus, so this would be the same thing as w plus the opposite of v, like this. So you go to w right there, and then what do you do with the vector, vector v right here? I don't have a, I think I have a rotating tool. Let's see if I can do this here. It's not going to be totally clean, but you'll kind of get it. So if I take this and then go, doo -doo -doo, I'm going to paste that in and make it smaller. And then take this, and I think there's a rotate. Is it a rotate, right? There it is. Rotate right 90, 
rotate right 90. Then I can take this, and where do I put that vector? I put it right at the end, right there. So th what is this? <laughs> That's a nice way to think. <laughs> what is this actually? <laughs> it's the opposite of V. So what's the resultant sum? It goes from here to here. Now, why is this vector considered to be the same as this vector right here? Why are those vectors considered to be the identical? Like this is the same, but they're not in the same place. Why are they considered to be the same? It's, well, yeah, we could prove that it's a parallelogram. That's a way to prove it. But the idea is a vector without an initial point can be anywhere. That's the point. If I just said that the vector 3, 4, that just means you go right 3, 3, 4, you go up. Does that make sense, everybody? So vectors, could this ve vector v is floating anywhere you want. You can add, you know, they could be over there. It doesn't matter as long as you don't break the size or the direction. Instead of, you know, you think of it in terms of like, you know, letter A, then B, then you C for variables, right? You're going to use Greek letters a whole lot, and then you're going to run out of Greek letters, so you're going to start using like uppercase and lowercase Greek letters, which is really fun. So, the displacement vector, lambda V is parallel to V pointing in the same direction if lambda is greater than zero and in the opposite direction if it's less than zero. The magnitude is, is theta times the magnitude of V. So, if you need both magnitudes, is all it So, the magnitude, so that, has anybody seen these double bars before? Okay, so the double bars around the vector means the magnitude. So the, the magnitude of a vector is a scalar. The magnitude is the length of the vector. So if you have a velocity vector, what is the magnitude of a velocity vector equal to? Speed, exactly. So when it's asking, you usually see S is equal to double bar of V. Excellent. So what did I say there? Speed is equal to this right here, velocity. Nice. How can we tell if, they, if the, any of them are parallel to V? Ah, because this, what, what can you see right here? What is W equal to? 2V. So therefore, what? W is parallel to? V. Ah, let's look at A. What about A? Are they parallel to each other? It looks like A is equal to what? Negative one half V. So therefore, what's true? A is parallel to V. What about the last one? Are they scalar multiples of one another? No, they're close. Two times two is four. Three times two is six. But five times two is, uh, is, is 10, not nine. How come the negative is a negative perfect? It just changes direction. Because now we have direction. Now lines have direction. It doesn't matter what direction it goes in. Like one's going this way, one's going this way. They're not going to touch each other. So per how, do you, how do you know if they were? <laughs> That's a totally, okay. we, we, that is an excellent question. And that is one of the things we answer next because it is not super clear. So you just asked the question perpendicular. Let me give you an example of why it's a little bit harder than you think. So here's a vector in space, OK? It's just in space. It's in three dimensions. Let's say it starts here and it ends right here. Let's say that this plane, let's say it is, I'm going to try to draw this here. It is, I'm going to draw the plane first, sorry. So here's a plane. Let me draw this properly. So there's a plane, there's a point on a plane. Okay? Let's say I draw a line straight off of that and it's perpendicular to this plane. Is everybody with me so far? So basically, I have a piece of paper, and there's a pencil sticking out of the piece of paper. You with me so far? How many different lines can I draw through that point that are perpendicular to that line? All of them. Not, well, not all of them, because an infinite number, but there are lines that aren't. So for example, there's this one, right? There's this one. There's this one. Any line that's on that plane that goes through that point is perpendicular. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. See all these? Yeah. So the question is, so, so it's not as quite as simple as just finding out if they're scalar multiples of one another. We have to learn a new mechanism, and that's next in, this, in the chapter. We'll get to that. But the idea is it's not just one line, because there, there's a whole rotational family of lines. What do you see right here? Can someone just tell me the vocab? What do you see? This vector is equal to, and by the way, again, I apologize for like the 10th time. I don't know my mathematicians paired variables together that look the same. This is a U and this is a V, okay? This is a U and this is a V. 
So u is going to represent the general term for unit vectors. A unit vector is any vector that magnitude of one. Exactly right. This means what does this? What do these two bars mean? Magnitude of v. So this is a what? Scalar. This is a number. So this could be five or ten or twelve. Can the magnitude be negative? No. Speed is always positive or zero, right? Okay. So this is a vector divided by a scalar, which is simply multiplied by a scalar, right? So what happens if you divide, if you put out front, if you divide a vector by its magnitude? What do you end up with? You always end up with a unit vector. Are there lots, are there millions and trillions and an infinite number of unit vectors? Yes. But if you have a vector and you want to guarantee that it's going in the same direction, you're not going to change direction, but you want it to be a unit of one, what do you just do? Divide by the magnitude. How do you find the magnitude of a two-dimensional vector? Those of you that have taken physics and had to do this. How do you find the magnitude of a vector? Ah. Uh, Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean theorem. So, so you might have seen vectors that look like this. There's a vector, 1, 2. What's the magnitude of that vector? Square root of? Close? Square root of 3? 4? It's the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared. So it's what? <laughs> root 5. <laughs> it's root 5. I think I gave you this little speech at the beginning of our journey into three-dimensional land. Some things stay exactly the same when we go to three dimensions. Some things break. Like, remember saddle points and the weird double concavity thing I told you about? Can be, a point can be concave up and concave down at the same time. This is not one of those cases. In three dimensions, how do you find the magnitude of, say, well, there's two dimensions. What, let's say I made it even more fun. V is equal to I plus 3J plus 2K. That's a vector. It's got it basically x directional change of 1, a y directional change of 3, and a z directional change of 2. How, what do you think the magnitude of v is going to be? Take a guess. One Just take a wild guess. The square root of what? Yes. Correct. Three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. Do you remember the distance between two points? The same thing. It doesn't, nothing breaks when you go to three dimensions. Nothing breaks. It's pretty cool. How do you pr have, have you ever proved that or you ever looked at that before? You see these pictures in three dimensions like this. And if this is 0, 0, 0 right there, let's call this point A, B, C. So let's call that A, B, and a height of C, like that. If you want to get this distance from here to here, you need to find, you're looking at that triangle right there, right? What's the base of that triangle? A squared plus what? Right? Square root. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Right. What's the height of that? C. So if you want the distance from, let's say, this point Q to R right here, what's the distance, so the magnitude from Q to R? That's going to be the square root of what? The square root of this squared, right, plus what? C squared, right? So what do you end up with? QR is, and that's super terrible handwriting, sorry. QR, what's that going to be? The square root of A squared plus B squared plus? Oh, look. It comes out. <laughs> Yay, wonderful. Wonderful. So two dimensions, like what's the magnitude of that two-dimensional vector right there? Square root of? The square root of? 10, the square root of 10. So in this case, this magnitude right here is the square root of 10. Nice. Okay. Very fun. Very, very fun.